Honourable Member for Douglas Central, Mrs Corlett. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'd like to ask the Minister for Infrastructure when he will be bringing forward the Smarter Movement Strategy. I call the Minister for Infrastructure to apply. Thank you, Mr Speaker. As advised in my written answer in another place to question 50 in November from the Honourable <coughs> Member for Ramsey, Mr Hooper, it is the intention of the Department that the Sustainable Smarter Movement Strategy will be laid before Timwald in the spring of 2021. However, whilst this strategy is important in terms of providing an overall direction of travel, it will not hinder the Department's ability to take forward various initiatives uh, prior to that, which are aimed at balancing the needs of all users of the, highland, of, of the island's highway network. I am committed to ensuring that our highways are viewed as connectivity corridors where different modes of movement are encouraged and supported. Work has commenced looking at various initiatives focused around schools, initially within the Douglas area, but this will in time encompass other towns. This work will also support the initiatives looking at lowering traffic speeds in residential areas in line with the recent decision of Timwall Court. The Honourable Member will know that the Department will be returned to Timwall Court next year with an update on the 20 mile per hour policy. The aim is very much that these steps will help us make best use of the highway network, reduce reliance on the private car and improve our environment. So, country question, Mr. Corbett. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Could I just ask the Minister if, if perhaps the aim of the Sustainable Smarter Movement Strategy is to re reduce the impact that transport has on the environment, would the Minister agree that providing an efficient, accessible public transport system that encourages people to use it is absolutely key yeah. to improving air quality, reduction in carbon emissions, and improving road safety? Would the Minister agree that a strategy for smarter movement should not be about forcing people to do anything, but it should aim to provide a balanced offer of, and a real choice about how we move around our island? Would the Minister also agree that in order to encourage people to use public transport, bus routes and timetables must provide connectivity? Services that take people to places they want to go when they want to go there, making bus travel an easy option because it's not the only option. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would absolutely agree with everything the Honourable Member has, has, has said there. Um, I do see our public transport system as integral to, uh, to, to the challenges that we have around how we move around our island and clearly links to the, um, to, to, to the climate change and, and, and net zero that we're committed to uh, tackling. Um, equally, the Honourable Member is absolutely right. We cannot force people to use. Uh, particular forms of, of transport. We need a balanced approach which makes uh, these things available and accessible to, to people. There are some journeys that do need a, that do need a car um, and, and we shouldn't be prohibiting those uh, sorts, of, sorts, sorts of, of, of journeys. We need to encourage people to make the right choices and we need to have uh, the best services that we, that we can have. And it is about connectivity. The Honourable Member used, used that word and that's uh, that's really essential so that people can make their journeys in a convenient, safe uh, manner, which, it, which is accessible, and encourage them to choose, um, choose a public transport option if, 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 that's, uh, if that's their choice. So, from your question, Mr Thomas. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I absolutely welcome the Minister's commitment to review the situation around schools in Douglas. Uh, would the Minister advise whether the smarter... Uh, smarter movement strategy is a new name for the transport strategy that's been looked for for 20 years and secondly would the uh, minister advise the scope of the smarter movement strategy does it go so far as to include ply for hire private hire the general taxi review that's been considered for a great number of years firstly and secondly does it include a review of the connect villages the other minibus scheme the northern trial that's long overdue in terms of uh, review Thirdly, uh, does it include things that are important for, uh, for the planning, for the area plan for the east, for instance, like access to the hospital, like the TT route, or all those things entirely separate from the Smarter Movement strategy? Minister to reply. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, a lot in Mr Thomas's uh, question there, but I'll try and, try and pick up uh, as many of those as I can, and if I miss any, uh, please, please remind me, Mr Thomas. Um, so, this is the... Smarter, trans smarter movement strategy is a, is a holistic approach for now. Um, I, I'm not well versed in the transport strategy from 20 years ago, 
uh, um, but I, what I am really keen is that we look forward to meeting the needs of the island uh, where we are now and where we think that we are going. Um, so the, the Sustainable Smarter Movement Strategy is an overarching strategy document which brings an overall policy focus as to how we move around the island. It's currently being finalised, taking into account both the climate emergency and the changes in behaviour which were observed as part of the COVID-19 pandemic. It will provide an overall hierarchy for, for how we travel, recognising that for the majority of us there will be a need to utilise different modes uh, depending on what we require and when. And Mr Speaker, many of us are users of, of different forms of, of transport, so bus users are also at times cyclists, also at times pedestrians, also at times um, uh, drivers or even uh, horse riders or any other form of transport. So we need a holistic approach to make the right choice at the, at the, <coughs> at the right time. And this overarching strategy links into some more detailed strategies which, which all speak into that same area. For example, active travel, bus travel uh, and parking. And we've made progress in some of those areas over the recent months. Have we made as much progress as I would have liked? No, we have not. No, but we're committed to pushing forward in, 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 each, of, in each of those. Um, taxis are clearly a part of the transport mix. It's about how we move around the island. And I'm really pleased to advise this, this Honourable House that uh, since being appointed as Minister, I have a two very constructive um, meetings with the uh, representatives of the, of the taxi community on the island and that's a commitment that we've made to, to continue on a quarterly basis and um, I'm committed to engaging uh, and progressing matters which are related to our taxi services. Um, in terms of Mr Thomas's question around Connect Villages, um, that is an area that uh, is under review at the moment. Um, the service <coughs> has been implemented in the north of the island and uh, we've got some work to do to um, confirm how that how that moves forward but it is very much part of the bus strategy which in turn sits within smarter movement and finally mr speaker mr thomas uh, referred to access to the hospital and the tt access road those are more about the uh, network, the physical network of, of, of the island, uh, certainly in terms of the TT uh, access improvements which are committed as part of the area plan for the east. That's a separate piece of, of work and work is underway to narrow down the, the, the options and come forward with a proposal uh, when we have one that uh, we believe is the right, uh, the right solution for the island's needs. Supplementary question, Mrs Corbett. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Minister has confirmed that connectivity is key, and could I ask, will the strategy support investment into public transport? Will it support reconnecting people that recent changes to routes have disconnected? Thank you. Yes, it reply. Thank you, Mr, Mr. Speaker. Um, the, Honourable, the Honourable Member raises the question of investment, and clearly that's a, uh, a, a topic that I would, would need to uh, engage properly with, uh, with, with my colleague, uh, constitutional colleague, Mr. Mr. Cameron, the Treasury Minister, and his, and his Treasury team. So, um, if there is need for investment, and um, there may well be, then that is a topic that we have to uh, discuss and go through the, the, the proper procedures. But yeah, I'm, I'm confident that if, um, if, if we can make a, a clear business case, that will be given proper, proper consideration by. By, by, by Treasury in, in accordance with their difficult task of balancing the island's, the island's finances, which of course we must all recognise have taken an adverse uh, impact through the coronavirus period. Um, in terms of the, 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 the bus service itself, there's, there's two elements to the bus service, both of which need to be recognised. One is a commercially viable element, and, and many of the routes on the island, uh, or a number of routes on the island, are commercially viable and make a positive financial return. Equally, there is a social um, element to uh, the, the, the bus service, which is really, really important. And it's why it's right that uh, government is involved in provision of, um, 
of, of uh, public transport on the island because from a commercial point of view, many of the routes on the island would not be commercially sustainable and w would only operate um, as a result of a, a wider policy which reflects social inclusion and, and, and related matters. And that, honourable members, is a really important uh, point that we need to we need to make sure we've got the right balance. We can't we can't allow the bus service just purely to be dictated to by what is commercially viable. Otherwise, we'd be left with 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 a very very shrunken service on this on this island. Um, there have been changes to the to the bus network made in recent years, and I am aware that those there have been services cut um, in in certain areas, and that that has an impact on uh, individual individual people and, and, and communities and I regret that um, equally there has to be some sort of uh, criteria around uh, around these considerations because we we don't have a bottomless pit of money and we have to make sure that uh, public funding is used in, 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 in the appropriate manner but the best um, the, the, the best way of securing uh, a viable public service public transport service is to make sure people are using it on a regular basis and making it a, making it a positive choice mr speaker the project question mr quine uh, thank you mr speaker <coughs> excuse me and in support of my uh, of the previous question from the uh, honourable member for douglas central mrs corlett and uh, given the minister's um, comments regarding uh, balancing uh, the needs of the um, the budget uh, against the social needs of uh, commercial considerations would the minister agree with me uh, that in order to establish a coherent and joined up smarter movement strategy that the need to that the department need to review their um, perceived practice of observing the cost of everything and the value of nothing such reply um, thank you very much mr speaker um, I, to some extent I would, I would wholeheartedly agree with what what uh, uh, the honourable member for Douglas South mr Captain Klein has, has, has said it, it is about value, not not cost. However, I don't believe that that is the approach that the department has taken. I think the department has had to make some very difficult choices over recent recent times, both in in, in my time as minister and in in, in uh, Minister Harmer's time as, as as minister, and that's the reality of um, trying to balance the conflicting um, pressures on. The public service we, we can't do it in a vacuum we can't do it without financial constraints um, and you have to anchor your decisions in some sort of um, objective test now to reassure the honorable member um, we actually the way we actually look at root uh, performance is is actually not around the revenue it generates it's actually around the passenger uh, usage of the service now you may say well surely those two things are are, are very much different sides of the same coin but actually they're not because the bus service on the island has a huge amount of uh, free or, or uh, discounted travel as a result of um, some of the social policies that, um, that that are delivered through the bus service so you know concessionary arrangements around uh, around school children concessionary arrangements around uh, the elderly arrangements around some of the subjects that we've covered this this morning, Mr. Speaker, around uh, those with disabilities and, and, and other issues, actually, those each journey that a passenger makes is, is treated as being of equal value. So I really don't believe we're reducing it purely to uh, cost. We do understand the value. I personally am a huge supporter of our public transport service, and actually, it's one of the areas that we benchmark really well. Uh, against other jurisdictions. You've seen in the UK where they've gone down the privatisation route where the, the buses are a lot older, the services are less frequent, the communities are cut off and forced to rely on either motor vehicles if they can afford them or taxis. I don't want us to go down that on, on, on this island um, but we have, to get, we have to get that balance. We haven't got a, a right for additional funding. Um, we need to make sure that we are justifying any uh, requests that, that uh, the, the service needs and we're running the service optimally Mr Speaker. 
Supplementary question, Mr Thomas. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the Minister for the very rich uh, initial answer mm -hmm. and uh, provided lots of food for thought and sorts of questions in coming uh, weeks. <laughs> Secondly, I commend, I commend um, the Department, the Minister, Mrs Christian, for meeting so warmly for the taxi drivers um, and to begin that discussion. Uh, two questions. Firstly, the smarter movement strategy that we can expect in April which is hierarchical and principles, well, that looks something like the housing strategy of 2020 and the housing strategy 2013, you know, some high-level principles. Uh, secondly, does the Minister agree that it's important not to focus too much on buses, because bus van ends inside the department, parking, because car parks are inside the department, and forget about the people out there that can compete with buses and other provision of car parks, and does the minister, finally, does the Minister agree with me it would be very important for the Office of Fair Trading to complete, com to c conclude their investigation of anti-competitive uh, aspects of this provision in coming weeks to inform the uh, uh, creation of a smarter movement strategy, a.k.a. transport strategy? Just to reply. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, the, the, the sustainable smarter movement strategy, I think, is likely to uh, be, a, be, be an overarching document which will set out uh, principles and will be underpinned by by more detail around uh, specific areas whether it be car parking buses uh, active travel etc so um, frankly whether it looks like the housing strategy from the, the, either of the years mr thomas has, has, has mentioned there um, I, I don't know that's for others to judge but what it what it will be is a is, is a key document um, bringing that holistic <coughs> that un, until now has been has been missing and I think you know the important thing is that we're looking at this thing in, in in the round it's about how people move move around and all the different alternatives and choices that that, that, that they have um, so that people can make the right choices for themselves and for the island um, <coughs> says Mr Thomas's reference to others competing um, yes it needs to be uh, we, we, we need to be cognizant of the impact of the decisions that the that, that, that are made. I mean, clearly, um, whatever government does in this in, in, in this regard uh, has, has an impact on on, on, on on the market. And I think, finally, Mr. Speaker, um, any any views on uh, the Office of Fair Trading's um, the way that they should move forward is very much a matter for uh, the Office of Fair Trading. It's not for me to to really comment or direct uh, on, on on that. The final supplementary is in the hands of the original question, Mrs Corlett. Thank you, Mr Speaker. If I could ask the Minister whether we should be finding ways to encourage bus routes rather than cutting bus routes. Um, the less of the service provided, the less people will use the service. Would you agree that we have to avoid false economy, especially social value? This is partly about social return on investment. Minister, to reply. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, I find myself uh, thoroughly agreeing with uh, the remarks of the honourable member for for Douglas for Douglas Central. And we have to have vision in, in, what, in what we're doing here. Um, there is a danger that if everything is uh, <coughs> by where we are, you, you make cuts and you get into a downward downward spiral. Um, we know that the bus service is integral to um, both how we move around the island, social inclusion, and the climate change agenda. And we need to very much bear all those things in mind as we move forward. Thank you. I'm conscious that that question had six supplementaries to it, but it still took 18 minutes. So I ask ministers to make sure that brevity is the watchword of the day. Please like and subscribe to the Isle of Man TV channel. Thank you.